Uh, thank you very much for listening uh, to be here. My name is Larry Isao Nilo uh, from MMCC Group, Nigeria, Media and Marketing Communication uh, Company. We are essentially into integrated marketing communication, um, uh, corporate communication, uh, stakeholders mapping, uh, media monitoring. Uh, essentially, uh, we're interested in that feedback to be able to uh, get our clients to um, uh, ensure that they connect with the consumer by knowing exactly the perception of uh, gaps between what they think they have and who the consumer think uh, they have. Um, I will be talking, I'm a practitioner, uh, I will be talking essentially um, on reputation management using the Pfizer uh, drug test fiasco in Nigeria uh, as case study. Um, let me start by saying if you are a company coming from America, you can take certain things for granted coming to the third world. Your reputation, uh, you're, you're coming with a borrowed gap. You have some reputation because you are coming from America. So people can take you for granted that they uh, um, expect certain standard of performance from you. So Pfizer in Nigeria, uh, the reputation rating would uh, deal essentially more with where Pfizer is coming from than what Pfizer represents itself. So it's up to any company coming from America to get to the, to the third world and not live up to the, the, the reputation that people expect uh, of you. Um, let me also add that, so, so I'm trying to link the origin, the country of origin, uh, with your reputation, there's a rub off on you if you are coming from uh, an advanced country like uh, the United States of America. <coughs> Pfizer has been in Nigeria for several years. Uh, Nigeria, I also believe, is an important market for Pfizer. And prior to the incident in Kanu, Kanu, uh, if I may add, um, is the most populous city in Nigeria, uh, but essentially rural. The people are, the literacy level is very low, and the, the influence of culture and religion is real. Prior to that incident, Pfizer had no history of uh, irresponsible behavior, none. But um, there are three basic questions I want to address in this presentation. What happened? What did Pfizer do uh, in Nigeria on that particular issue? And what should have happened? What should they have done? And what did not happen? What did they refuse to do? Uh, the consequences of that and then planting, what I call planting a timely seed uh, is very, I believe, important to reputation management. Uh, if you know the right time, the right season to plant the reputation seed. I will anchor the discussion on these three elements. The issue of relationships, stakeholders, relationships and the reputation of the uh, company itself, Pfizer in this case, and the need to manage crisis when uh, crisis, I mean, would always come, but the need to manage it. Um, what I discovered from what has happened, a bit of what happened, uh, there was a half break of meningitis in Nigeria, especially in Kanu City. And people, children were dying. Fighter came in to uh, provide some intervention and introduced this antibiotic, Trovan. In the process, 
it is believed that about 200 children were affected some way. Some died, some deformed, and you would expect some kind of concern from Pfizer. But we could begin to look at something that looks like taking people for granted. How? In an environment like the third world, like Nigeria, for instance, you have government officials who are willing to compromise easily. And so you can get away with murder. And that means a company that is not so particular about what reputation to, I mean, should mean to those people, you can take them for granted because the officials who should have provided some kind of scrutiny are ready to compromise. And then the issue of culture and faith of the people of Kano. Uh, Kano is about 95% uh, Muslim community. And the, there is a mantra, oh, it's an act of God. So easily um, disasters that should have been seen as uh, something that was caused by human beings, and then you approach it in a way to ensure it doesn't happen in the future, you resign to fate, and you don't take action. So there is that cultural inhibition, which also can be taken for granted. And then you also have the social condition of the people of Canada. As I said, though most populous, but essentially a rural environment. And the people, the social well-being is very low. So, and I think there could be a connection between your social status and how well you can fight for your rights. Because if you wake up daily and you're pursuing how to make a living, people would infringe on your rights and get away with it because you hardly have time to attend to that. You want to find a way of getting the next meal. So the representational issue, what I consider as Pfizer taking its image, its reputation, when that incident happened, Pfizer denied it was not because of Trovan uh, trial. People were dying anyway because of the heartbreak of meningitis. And then, sorry, exactly on the grounds you said that there are ways to say sorry that avoid you being in legal trouble, but it's, it's no excuse. It's a cop out to say I'm concerned about the legal situation. That doesn't mean you can't show compassion, concern, even distress for what people have gone through. And you know, 